Hi, welcome everyone. Tonight's going to be the first stream for a while. Uh, I'm going to, over the next couple of weeks, uh, try and make a ZX Spectrum game, uh, Christmas themed. So I'm going to make a start on that tonight. I'm going to be using multi-platform arcade game designer, uh, which is a piece of software that runs in Windows and exports uh, games out to various 8-bit machines. You can make games for all these old computers and some new ones like the Spectrum Next. So I'm just going to be making one for the Spectrum Standard Edition. I've got a basic game idea in my head. It's going to be a single screen based Christmas game. Uh, there'll be presents to collect around the screen. You'll have to Take them back to your sled and then once you've collected all the presents on each screen you'll then move on to the next one decided to go for this single screen approach just so that if i don't get many done coming 20 issues then i can stop and carry on at a later point but i can still get a fully functional game so this is pretty much the first time using this software. I've had a play about and made a very small prototype sort of game just to get a little bit of knowledge on it but really I am starting from knowing pretty much nothing with it. So first of all I'm going to set up the actual display of the window. This is what the screen will look like. Uh, so this is your sort of play area and you can toggle on these different things like timers, energy, <coughs> scores and lives. So I think if I select that and that, yep, yeah, that's how you do it. So what I'll do, I'm going to move these down to the bottom out of the way and then we're going to have the screen take up the vast majority of the top part of the screen. So for now we'll just pop these all down at the bottom just so I can access them easier later on and they're not hidden underneath the actual screen. So I want to keep a few lines at the bottom to have like a di the display for where the lives and things like that are going to be. So I think I'll have a board around it and then probably line in the middle and a gap either side of it. So we'll go with five at the bottom. One, two, three, four, five. So the play area is going to take up all that area at the top. So next. The way this works, you've got all these different menus uh, to do different things. The blocks, as far as I know, you can have as many of those as you want, or at least as much as memory will allow, because obviously these computers, the basic Spectrum only had 48k of memory, so I think there will be a limit, but I, I'm not sure that there's actual physical limit imposed by the software. So you just draw your, your blocks about in here. And these blocks you can give all different behaviours, so various things. I believe you've got an empty block that does nothing. Uh, you've got a platform block which, as far as I'm aware, you can jump on top of. but And you can jump up through. You've got a wall block, which is like a solid, immovable block that you can't go through. Ladder blocks, to zoom as it sort of describes it's a ladder. Water blocks, collectibles, I think that's what I'll be using. 
uh, for the collectibles, although I think you can use sprites or some, or some other system as well, which I may look into at a later date. Uh, but that's going to be your wall block for now. <laughs> then sprites, this is where we you draw your sprites like your game character and things like that. As far as I'm aware, the limits for sprites, you can have up to 12 on screen at once. Uh, so that'll be something to bear in mind as I'm making the game. Objects. I think that might be the other way of doing the collectibles, but I'm not 100% I'm not sure on that. And then a map. This is where you build up with the screens you make. You make screens, you draw out a screen using the blocks that you create. And then screens are then used on the map. Uh, you put them next to each other and you can interlink them, but the way we'll be doing it is physically, uh, not physically moving between screens. I'll use code to start on the next screen when you've completed the first one. So I think first off, it's Christmas game, so we'll make a start on drawing the player strike. So Christmas game will be Father Christmas, I think. Uh, for those that don't know, there's limitations on the spectrum with uh, colours and things. You have uh, seven different colours of each has like a half sort of darker mode of each colour and then there's black as well and each 8x8 eight eight square of pixels in the game can only have one ink colour and one background colour uh, so it gives quite a nice style to the games it's what I grew up with and one of my fondest sort of memories of video game styles so let's so I'm going to do a character that's probably the head and the heart are going to take up most of the character I think Big beard. And I'll have the body here. Beard not quite as big. And then I think it's just going to be a case of very simple animation on the feet, they'll just move up and down. white or just have an outline there. No, we'll go back and have the, the white. It's a case of playing around when you've only got one colour and such a low resolution trying to do what you can with the limitations of the system.
and we will animate this. Uh, we'll probably have just a couple of frames of animation. Just I'll have the feet moving up and down. And then we'll flip it for the other direction. copy of the frame. them to copy frame and I to insert a new one. There, we've got a little animation going on. You can just see it here in the little preview window. I'll polish this up at some point, but I think just to get started with, that'll do nicely. So many different keys to learn here. I do be probably writing them down, but they're there in the help. I'm sure I'll get the hang of it. So there we've got the player going in the other direction. Get a place you're 
Right, so that's a block for the floor. Uh, so if we now go to screens, I should be able to draw with this. Not the nicest looking floor, but just for now while I'm playing about trying to get things working, we'll go with it. Right, I need to draw some strike for when the player's going up ladders as well. So we'll just... It looks like it takes whatever colour you've been using in the previous scene and then changes this when you go back in. Right, so to add a new uh, sprite, that was X. What I'll do is go back to the previous one, copy that. Now we'll paste that in here. And this has got to be the player from behind, so... It's not going to have any eyes. Probably really just the back of his white hair. His arms. And I'll probably just animate those up and down for a quick animation. So I'll animate this now. Uh, so we'll copy this frame. Insert another one. See what that looks like as a quick and dirty animation. Yeah, I don't know how that'll do. Right, so now I think on the screens you have to Add in starting positions, sprite positions. Right, we'll start the player there. Now, as far as I know, you could auto generate scripts so that the player can start moving. But first of all, we'll add the keyboard controls. I think we'll go with the, the classic ones which are Q and A for up and down, Note and P for left and right. 
Now if we go to script generator We ought to generate those and we can choose various scripts for the player control. So you can have a rocket man, which as far as I know has left and right sort of a rocket booster and I think it fires you can fire like lasers as well with that one. Top down that's for making top town games, presuming the style of maybe attic attack and things. Platformer ladders and levels i think that's the one we'll go for the platform i think this says left and right and jump whereas i'm wanting to be able to use ladders as well so we shall choose which sprite for these <coughs> so we've got right left we'll use that one for that and then we'll reuse that as well for that and we'll generate our scripts um, so all the other, everything stays the same apart from those two. Right, so let's see how this runs. Again. Here we go. And nothing's happening. A normal spectrum. Is that not working? I've got the spectrum selected. When I tested it out, this out on my other game, it just worked. Try saving it. So we've got that set up. We've got a block. We've got our sprites. Objects, we don't need any of those. <coughs> Screens, we've got a screen. It's very basic, just to try and walk backwards and forwards on. The map's got that screen in it. It's there. Missing something pretty obvious here. Try changing it to a 48k spectrum, see if that makes any difference. Trying to load something. Brings back good memories this. Sat waiting for a tape to load. I'd like to add a loading screen when I actually get the game done as well. Spent hours as a child making pictures on my Spectrum so it'd be good to have a stream of just drawing a loading screen. I think this will bring back more memory soon because I've got a feeling that 
it won't load after waiting ages for this to load. Yeah, because the other game I made just worked first time. Playing around with settings now and hoping that maybe something will start working. So the auto, that script creator, that it's created these scripts, which this is a sort of programming language that it uses. So if you press key left, directional press left, it sets it to the images that I've given it. So the yeah, zero was the first right, one the second. Have a quick look in the documentation, see if there's something obvious that I'm missing. Checking that I'm saving it in the correct directory. Checking that the example project is saved in the same way. Uh, it's got various an APJ file, the message file, and a zero to twenty nine. If it's where I'm saving it, that's the issue. Well, I'm going to 
going to delete all these, everything in there. Apart from that. Place it. made no difference. I've got to have the right files in there now. Right. It says delete me, so... For example game had another file in. anything with that file removed. Now oh, this is really frustrating. Is that why it's yeah, the other game I made it had a menu script and that had a menu and that didn't even have a script for it so oh, we've got a menu now. The most interesting stream, me just restarting an emulator and it not loading anything. Aha. Looks to be Evers here. restart it and maybe have a look through these errors may be the way to go I've not realized there is errors in that window so let's load project now let's run it Label not found, event 19. Fifty two others. go through these scripts and see if I can find where these things are missing because I'm presuming there's some things in the scripts that um, auto-generated correctly. So window top, window top left. So let's have a look for those. They're not mentioned in that script. I don't think we'll have anything for these because I've not generated them. So maybe in here. So that's the code for the game menu. Main loop. Uh, 
Ah, so event A13, I presume, would be 13. Maybe. I can't even find this window top. Have a search in the documentation. in the documentation. tutorials that I read earlier but none of them seem to mention anything like this. You created your game, you created your sprite. Let's try generating these scripts again with Template, I presume I'll wipe it all. Project Christmas game script generator empty auto generate generate that save it as it says. Right, let's try running that again. Nope, absolutely nothing. Pretty much all the same errors that we had before. The player's got no events. No evers found. Well, it says there's 52 evers there, so. Let's 
trying to make these scripts again, so we'll... So what have we got? Rocket Man, Top Down, Platformer. That is in levels. Let's try Top Down. Because that's what I used in the, the game that I managed to get running previously. Add a sprite in as well. So the player's got the script. If it's not got these variables in the scripts, and it should have. Tell you what, I'm going to load my other game and see what that actually had in different. See if this runs because this was running. <laughs> right, so this runs. It's a little game I've made where it was going to be for C Jam, but I never got around to finishing it because. But I've got things working. So that still runs, so it's not an issue with the emulator, it's an issue with the actual game itself. Let's have a look at these scripts. Game initialization. anywhere that's got window top A little bit annoying, I've had to zoom this screen in, otherwise uh, it'd be tiny, the multi-platform AGD, because uh, you can't zoom in on it. anything particularly different in here. I don't figure out this shortly, it might be a case of ending the stream and then try again tomorrow. I 
Christmas game. Yep, suddenly all these others. Every time to have a Google. See if I can find anything. Oh, looking on the forums, there's somebody that looks to have had the exact same issues they look to have. They've got 52 errors, I've got 52 errors. Right. I think... I may have worked out what the issue is. If it's this, I'll be so annoyed. Right. Let's remove a space from that. Let's remove a space from... No, there isn't one there. Right, let's have another go. Turns out it's taken me about half an hour to work out that I shouldn't have a space in a folder name. Word. Desktop, Christmas game. Right, here goes. So the fact that there was a space in the folder is what was causing it to not load. And we've got Santa just moving in one direction at the minute. Oh, I've, he's got eight direction behaviour, that's why. Right, we've now got a game running. So let's try and do a little bit more before I finish. generate a script for this player let's make it ladders and levels that way that that right, let's save that right let's see what happens now It's nice how it auto sort of generates that. I presume these work straight out of the box. Right, my sprite is, I've got those the wrong way around. Don't think you can jump with this temp, with this auto generated controls. So I'll probably have to work out how to manually code that. Uh, left, right. <laughs> right, so the players go in the right directions now. Right, let's have a go at adding some ladders in and see if we can get ladders working tonight. So we will need to make a block 
to represent a ladder. Don't know what it is with these randomly changing. Oh, I know exactly what it is. Um, not set it to spectrum standard. Right, so we need to add a new block. So one and two to go between them. X for a new block. So new block. The ladders have to be, these are 8 by 8 the players 16 by 16 so we'll need to make it so that the ladders take up two, two blocks wide. I'll go with a, a yellow. Yellow ladder. Do it like that and then when we stack them on top of each other they'll tile. Uh, so X to add a new one. Now if we go to the screen. First of all, we need to give, tell it that it's a ladder, don't we? So it's a ladder block, and that's a ladder block. Go to our screen. Let's just draw the ladder to check that they work. they work quite straightforwardly just out of the box. I'd have thought that I would be able to go up and down that. I'm losing energy it's just the way when I'm on that block. Right, I've got one of them as a deadly block. Hi Sticks, how are you doing? Just spent the last half an hour, 40 minutes trying to get the game to run. Because uh, it was giving me 52 errors and nothing seemed to be wrong. Turned out that I had a space between Christmas and game in the folder name. And it doesn't like that. Uh, so we'll make that a ladder block. I'm just playing about with this at the moment, just trying to work out how everything works and then I'll draw some proper art for it. Yeah, so we can go up and down a ladder. Yeah, I couldn't believe it. It must must be 40 minutes that I've been fiddling about with all all the scripts, changing the settings in the emulator, and but I had to look in the forums for this software, and someone had got the exact same thing. Yeah, so it sort of auto generates these scripts, this is the programming language it uses. So at the minute I've just got the auto generated stuff. But I need to work out how to jump because it doesn't seem to do that with the ladders script so we'll change it to platform and I'm going to cut and paste the code that that generates. Okay. 
keys do we have? So that should the player should jump now, but he won't be able to go up those ladders. I'll just end if yeah, it seems that way. So M jumps. Player event. Mind these notepads keep going off the screen because I've had to zoom in on the screen because you can't. When you expand the window of the software, it doesn't change size at all. So whenever I open up these notepads, they go off screen. So if key fire jump seven fall. So I presume that's all I need to add into the other script. So generate ladders and levels. Play a script. I think if I just paste that in there, we should have ladders and jumps. You been up to tonight, Sticks? You been watching Dunny? Haven't seen the most fluent going up ladders behaviour. To literally be dead centre of the ladder to let it go up. Now let's add some platformer blocks, see how those work. Uh, X for a new block. Yeah, the game that I'm going to make, it's going to be a series of single screens. I thought that way, depending on how much time it takes me, even if I only do one or two, I can still make a complete game. Your Father Christmas, the naughty elves have chucked all the presents out of your sleigh around the level and you'll have to run about collecting, avoiding elves and snowmen and stuff and then pop them back in your sleigh and then once you've done that that screen will be complete and you'll go on to the next one so that's a platform block is it a fodder block i just sat that as a platform Quite a nice little piece of software this. It's all sort of built in the sprite editor, everything. should have that there. wonder if the redefined keys works from the start. Up, down, left, right. Pause. It's 
bit rubbish. It didn't let me define a key for jump. If I doubt the problems were loading, it wouldn't have actually taken me about very long to actually get to this point of actually having a player moving about and Right, let's draw some more make this ladder look a bit better. Go with red for the ladder, I think. Get your head out round L to actually draw things and make them look half decent when you can only have one ink colour and one background colour in each 8x8 area. a little better than it did before. Probably do we get some organisation in these because I don't think you can't swap them about once you've got them in a position and I'll probably have 50 or 60 of these little 8 by 8 blocks to build the levels before we finish but Probably do with planning out exactly what blocks I need. Right, we'll, instead of blocks, we'll work on a, another sprite. So we'll have a snowman as an enemy as well, I think. So let's draw the sprite for a snowman. Again, we'll have it mostly head and sort of hat and not much legs to keep it the same sort of style. Can we 
snowman's body. Slightly bigger hat. This is getting as much detail in as I can with these few sprites. Yeah, that looks awful. long since I've done any of this type of art. Normally I'm using more colours. for more white and tick the details in the black maybe that'll work better a little bit better. Too bad for a snowman. So let's copy that, add another frame, paste it, get rid of that leg, let's go back and get rid of that leg, and there uh, we've got
Who's got everybody in snowman? Happy with that than Father Christmas. That's pretty rubbish. I'm gonna to have to do some more work on that. That's not too bad. Right, so we will copy that. And add a new one. And paste that. Flip it horizontally. that one it's loads of keyboard shortcuts for all this it's not point and click so I'm having to remember and there doesn't seem to be much consistency Right now, going backwards and forwards. Let's save that before we go any further. And generate a script. Forget that one. And strike type one is going to be. What can we have? I'm thinking of a patrolling enemy that just goes backwards and forwards, which I think there's one for. Horizontal patrol. Left, we want that. Right, we want that. Everything else is left to existing. So I think once I get this enemy working, uh, then that'll probably be it for tonight. But we'll go have a read of the documentation to hopefully know what I'm doing a bit more in the next stream. Uh, strike positions. I run it, that enemy hopefully will just work. Are we getting on with the restricted drawing? Or does it make the development quicker? I'm struggling a little bit to be honest because most of the pixel art I've done for the last however many years there's lots of I've been using use different colours. I've limited my palette but at least I've been able to use different colours for shading. Whereas this is like proper like one bit art where you can only have the one ink colour and one background colour. So I'm finding it a little bit of a struggle to begin with. Right, what's going on there? Why is that? Screens. I'm sure I'll get the hang of it. I've got 19 days to get this game done. Probably 18, because I'm not going to stream Christmas Day or probably Christmas Eve either, so. Aha. So you can change what it actually is. That visual representation doesn't look like it matters. then Christmas Day I'll pretend it's 1984 all over again and I'll fire up a spectrum 
emulator and play my new Spectrum game. Oh, cool, there we go. We've got a patrolling enemy. We've got a player that can jump. We've got some platforms in. Are you going to wrap it? Yeah, I might do. Put it on an SD card and just wrap it up. Now, I was saying earlier in the stream, I don't know whether you were about at that point, but I'm planning on do like the loading screen. Uh, so that'll be a stream one night, just doing like a full screen loading screen to stick at the beginning of the game. The way that you set up the screens, that's the playable area. And then this bottom bit, you can add these things in that auto sort of update, but I'm probably not going to have energy. I will have some form of timer so you get a higher score if you do the level quicker. The lives, currently it's represented as a number, but I know you can do it using uh, the, if you change the font, so you don't need all these letters. I'm only going to need probably the capital letters and maybe the exclamations and things and the numbers. So I'll reuse these fonts for making graphics to use for the sort of uh, UI at the bottom. I've read some stuff that that's possible. So you're passing data values and loop through them and then create it using the fonts. So that saves memory because obviously if i'm getting this working on a 48k spectrum then i need to keep things as lean as i can uh, then realize you've no ram pack so you can't play it the zx81 that had the dodgy ram pack i know the way that used to work you just you could type in a program because uh, my mate had a zx81 You'd have it all running, and if you just caught that ram pack on the back, you lost everything. People used to sort of even super glue them to the computer just so they wouldn't move. But yeah, that's the plan for the bottom anyway. That looks quite a festive font, so I think we'll maybe use that font for the... Yeah, I think that's probably it for tonight. I need to have a read of the documentation a bit more. And then decide from there exactly how I'm going to get all this working. I'm pretty pleased with how that's gone. Apart from the space in the folder name. So yeah. Right, let's have a look, see who there is to read. I think there's only you watching sticks and you've probably got Dunny on anyway so what's the point in me taking you to Dunny? So I think we'll probably just not bother raiding. So thanks for dropping by and I'll catch you all probably tomorrow night I'll do a bit more of this. See you later. <laughs>